the Lofotis. The Vikings, who built a base here in the 9th century, called these islands in the extreme north of Europe the Islands of the Gods. Reminiscent of the Alps, this group of islands just off the beautiful Norwegian coast is located between 100 and 300 kilometers north of the polar circle. The origins of the primeval Lofotis date back to the beginning of the Earth's history and are more than three and a half million years old. During this incredibly long period of time, the mountains of the Lofotis sank back into the Earth's interior prior to emerging once again around a million years ago. In the Quaternary, the earliest period of Earth's history, the landscape was mainly shaped by the Ice Age that ended around 10,000 years ago. The four main large islands of the Lofotis are wild and rugged. They contain numerous picturesque fjords and straits. Despite its remote northern location, the legendary Vikings were not the first to settle on these islands. They were inhabited 7,000 years ago. This enchanting landscape has always attracted settlers. The scant landscape of the Lofotis has been caused by the numerous settlers who've lived here. Most of the forests have been completely cut down. Their trees were used as building material for dwellings and boats and also to make fire. The Vestfjord played a vital part in the settlement of the islands. Since the 3rd century BC, the settlers here survived by farming the land and breeding animals, and fishing also played an important role. As the cod of the polar sea migrate each year in late winter to the Vestfjord to spawn, an increasing number of fishing families now live here. A speciality of the Lofotis is its dried stockfish. The cod are tied together by their tails and hung up to dry in the open air. The cod that has dried out in this way is exported to southern Europe. The highest mountain of the Lofotis is 1100 meters above sea level. Some of the mountain peaks here are covered with snow even in the warm months of summer. According to legend, the Viking chiefs of Trondelag sent their men to the Lofotis due to its abundant fishing grounds. Because of frequent rainfall, the mountain slopes are covered with green vegetation, ideal nourishment for the local herds of sheep and goats. The first real settlements on the Lofotis originated in the 12th century, 
Although the islands were located some distance from the main trading routes of those times, they developed rapidly. Strict regulations were introduced to control the cod fishing here, as the local farmers also began to fish. With the invention of pickle, fish could be preserved for long periods of time. Thus, in the 17th century, fishing became increasingly intensive. As it was free for anyone to fish here in the 19th century, much overfishing took place and this threatened the livelihood of the local fishermen. The majority of fishermen of the Lofotis were forced to stop fishing in the North Sea. Although in recent years the islands have become more and more popular with tourists, these goats seem to be a little curious about these strange new faces. The high mountains of the islands protect the land from strong storms. The Gulf Stream is responsible for the relatively mild climate here, and this is also reflected in the water temperature. The magnificent natural landscape of this region's many small islands and its mighty rock formations and mountains has inspired many an artist. For many years, the Lofotis have attracted those who've wanted to escape the hectic bustle and hustle of city life and replace it with a tranquil and natural landscape. Indeed, these beautiful and fascinating islands are now popular with people from well beyond Norway itself. Each island is different to another. The rugged mountains and magnificent fjords are a magnificent sight. Rocks, sandy beaches, meadows and swamps form a truly unified landscape. It's therefore hardly surprising that the landscape of the Lofotis is now so popular with the various artists who come here. When the sun begins its farewell at the end of an impressive and fascinating day, it's impossible not to be enchanted by the unique beauty of these islands. The colourful light of the evening sky that is reflected on the rocks of the mountains gives this place an almost heavenly atmosphere. Thus the Vikings did indeed choose a suitable name for their island paradise. The Lofotis are most certainly the islands of the gods. <laughs>